WWE Mutants, we got Sting, Bray Wyatt, and Stardust mutated beyond recognition to become creatures that'll spook you in the night or come down to visit Earth and say, <laughs> Let's unbox this spookiness. Let's start off with Bray Wyatt. Yo, so when I do these multiple pack unboxings, three figures in one video or something, I try and come up with a theme. And it would work if I, I don't know, Stardust is kind of the outlier here because Sting and Bray are both like animals. A lot of people say that Bray is, is like Killer Croc or something. I guess it's because he's just a crocodile set. I guess I, I can see that and I do understand and agree that yes, now out of the box he does look like he's highly influenced by Killer Croc, especially considering that the tail doesn't fit. I got a plan. I got a plan. All right. There we go. Now it's in. Now it's open Stardust. Stardust. You know, I was this, you know, you know what guys, you know. Stardust. Uh, an interesting thing I realized about this figure is that they don't use Cody Rhodes' likeness on this figure. Maybe that's why it was released in this set. Because I'm pretty sure Stardust is a WWE entity, not Cody Rhodes. So that's how they can still put out Stardust figures by making Spaceman Stardust. I'm assuming. I really don't know. And then let's open Sting. And then get this review on the road. You know what, guys? I'm hungry. Oh, yeah. This bad boy comes with another frickin' tail. Let's see if it actually goes on, unlike Bray. Oh, yeah, that was as easy as anything. Huh. Cool. Oh my gosh, it's Bray Wyatt's Spooky Man, also known as Crocodile Bray, because crocodiles kind of have something to do with the Wyatts, because they're like swamp people. I also do like how he has lobsters crawling on him, or shrimp. Shrimp? Maybe, I don't know what that is, I'm not really a fisherman. The tail is cool, it was really a bummer though that I had to hammer it on. Pretty sure that that's not supposed to be how action figures are constructed, so uh, maybe next time Mattel you'll make it a little easier. Look at his feet with his toes coming out. Uh, he's like the lizard or croc, cro cro killer croc, I, I'm not sure which, one of the two, but I think this is not one of the coolest of the set. Like the sculpts there, it's a nice sculpt and everything, but I think just like as a figure, it's like whatever. Maybe it's the shrimp that kills it for me. I was I was all aboard the train until those bright pink, pinkish red uh, shrimp just, just come out and ruin the whole visage for me, so I don't, I, uh, all right, let's, uh, let's check it out closer. Look at that head. Oh my gosh, it's Bray Wyatt. And you can see scales everywhere. The level of paintwork and sculpt detail is crazy considering the lack of level and detail, the level of detail we get in regular Mattel figures. This is wild. Although right here, there's like literally, his pants are ripping apart, but then gets right to the, the crotch region and it's like, no, it's all good. It's all good, nothing's ripping up here. And I think that takes away from the illusion and gives him a bit of a uh, wearing tidy whiteies type look, like underwear look, instead of actually making this something else. It, it just really breaks the illusion for me. I do like though how they dirtied up his boots. So they did some nice dry brushing and it's like, what the heck Mattel? Where's this level on your regular figures? It's not there. And here is Stardust. Oh my gosh, you see that? It's closing in the dark. That's really cool, right? 
so unlike a lot of the WWE figures that say they glow in the dark, this one actually does. This one, I'd say, is mostly a reuse of a Stardust body other than the hands and the feet and the head and the arms maybe? Yeah, I think the arms are slightly different. This, it's, it's like, it's not as imaginative as some of the other figures. I think it looks really cool and the glow in the dark feature, I, I quite enjoy, but when you compare it to the picture on the back of the box, it's a lot more interesting than what we actually get. It's like comparing a picture of sea monkeys to the actual sea monkeys. Articulation wise though, he does have the same articulation as a regular WWE Elite Basic, which is cool if you want to swap body parts or something, if you want to make a spooky alien figure. But this, it's only for those that believe aliens exist. If you don't believe, get out of here. Unsubscribe, unsubscribe. But I actually really like this figure because it reminds me of the Blue Lantern Corps. Hope baby, hope. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, Sting. Now, this figure, I think, is pretty much a hot mess. He has, like, chicken feet, those weird pincer hands, and then the tail of a scorpion. Like, I get he's supposed to be a scorpion, but I don't, I don't think this just works. I don't think it looks cool. I think the idea is there, but the execution, it just doesn't work. It's like one of those where the idea is solid, but on paper, but in manufacturing, it just didn't come out great. And because of the oddness of his legs, he's difficult to stand. He has weird weight distribution because of those huge claws and the tail. But one thing I will say that's really great about this figure is the head sculpt. I think it's one of the best Sting face sculpt scans we've received yet of a contemporary Sting. This is really good. On par with the TNA figures good because those had some amazing face sculpts of Sting. And I think this is the best Mattel face sculpt for Sting. I don't know if it's new or not because right here in my figure defender case I have Sting and you can see that head and it looks kind of off. But then when you compare it to the head on this sting, this head sting just totally reads sting and looks really great, really captures the wrestler. So I, I don't know, maybe get it to do a head swap, but really you'll be stuck with this kind of dumb, gross body. I think it sculpted well. It's, it, they did a good job with that and the paint and everything. But it just doesn't look cool. It doesn't look that good. I don't like it one bit. So now that I reviewed all the figures in the set, I have to say that these are pretty much duds. There are some good ones, but I really don't know who this is targeted at, like what the demographic is for. And I said that in the previous review, and I'm gonna continue saying that every time they put out a new figure in the this weird like fantasy line. I think it would be much better if we just got fantasy attires of figures, not them becoming aliens or monsters, just good figures because I reviewed the Tough Talkers and I really enjoyed it because it was fun, really playability, but these it's just like, I don't see the point. I don't see what this fulfills because if you need a scorpion man, why would you get Sting? Yeah, that's a good alien, but I bet there are better alien toys out there. And who wants a figure of Bray Wyatt with some shrimp on his shoulder as a, as a lizard creature, crocodile, alligator? I, I don't get it. I don't understand the point of this line. And if you like it, great for you. I'm really happy because there's some really amazing designs for these characters but I feel like it would be better if Mattel just took the designs that were made for the WWE Immortal Games and released a line of figures from that elite style rather than doing this, because I just don't see the purpose. And if you do see the purpose, let me know in the comments. And here's an even better idea. Get those creative juices flowing. If you were to create a wrestler in a mutant style, what would it look like? What would it be influenced by? Would it be like Brie mode as the Ice Queen? Or would it be more like AJ Styles as Wolverine? Let me know in the comments. Cut.